how okay. to build an Alexa skill for Amazon Echo Show. So how do you build an Alexa skill for Amazon's Echo Show? Well, I can't turn you into a programmer. That's like a different video. We should link to that. Okay, link below. But, right. but you can. But you can teach you all the things we learned when building the video app. And we learned a lot, We right? learned a ton. We learned a ton of stuff building the video app. What did we learn? We learned a lot of the restrictions through Amazon, a lot of things you can do, can't do. The YouTube's blocked. I don't know, oh, what else yeah, did yeah. we learn? All right, so let's get into it. File restrictions, that's a good one. So we go into uh, pitch a particular client and we show them a skill that we built, right? You see, what ended up happening was the, the video was three hours long. It was like the longest video that we ever did. And guess what? It didn't show on their demo. Like what the heck went on? Go no, into the logs. We're trying to get, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of funding and boom, just, it just wouldn't it load. Just didn't even load. <laughs> All right, death by demo. Anyways, so we went into the logs and found out it timed out. So even though like we created a video skill, you still have to be wary of the time that it takes for the video file to go from the server to your Echo device because it preloads the whole entire thing. So if you don't have a lot of bandwidth, and you have a large file, your Echo Show device may time out. Yeah, also I don't think something we ever covered was like how much cache is there on the Echo device? Is it gonna be able to load a three hour a video? Question. I don't know. I it, think we just sort of gave up because we're like three hours is too long, but right. that's a good question for us to answer. I, Why doesn't it send five minutes at a time? Well, so it worked in high bandwidth though, right? So, so when we had like a much higher bandwidth on the device, it worked. So it must have a pretty large temporary storage, but enough about that. What else did we find? So Amazon's got these weird layers when you're in their skills. You can yeah. interact with your own skill, ask new questions, but as soon as you start a video, you're like, okay, I've really found the video I'm after, start playing it. You release the entire session, and then you can't ask follow-up questions, we can't help you. Oh, I didn't like this video, can you show me the next one? Nope, we can't. Right. You're, you're in Amazon's hands now. Right, very similar to iPhone 1. When iPhone 1 released their video product, they basically would take you to the video player, it would lock you, you couldn't get back to the app. You had to exit the video player, you had to go back into the app. Amazon right now is the same exact way. So whether it be in Fire TV or Echo Show, what you have to do is your session is released. So when you're building a video app right now, as of today, you need to think about it. The experience is the best way to get to your video content and the video content is really the thing that you're get, trying to get them for. So it's more of a user experience of how do you take them through that journey to get to that piece of content. When you get them to that content, that's the end. Now, what you can do is when you go back into the skill, you know how much of the video that they watch. So you can say, hey, would you like to start where you left off? Because they do allow you to show how much has been played, but there's not a lot of interactivity with their video interface right now. It's, uh, it's quite difficult to work with, and there's not really much that you can customize. Yeah, one of the hardest things for basically everything on Alexa now is user education. So even though you can get back into the skill and start that, you have to get them to say the words, like right. restart the skill. And it's it's hard getting people to that point. It's not one of those things that we'd like to see Amazon do more education about right. and or build a better interface where that education is not needed. But it's a hard hurdle to overcome on these new devices. Yeah, I think they'll change it over time, but right now it's really lacking in what you can possibly do with using Echo Show and video skills. So what else did we learn? What else did we learn? What else did you learn? Uh, I learned that we had to send everything over HTTPS. So yeah. all those videos that you have yeah. hosted have to have your certificates. Yep. And yeah, they have a specific domain certificate, so it has to be like a registered domain certificate. Uh, we did have some issues with the self-signing of the video files, uh, so we switched to the service and it was fine. Yeah, but just another hurdle to overcome. All right, also on Echo Show, um, we have card restrictions. So on Echo Show, uh, Fire TV has some really interesting restrictions. Let's talk about the card restrictions on Echo Show. So if you wanna show a visual representation of your skill while the skill is going through the process, right now they only give you three different templates to choose from for the Echo Show cards. So just like on Echo, Echo Dot, they have uh, these visual cards that you can see on your phone. Right on the Echo Show, when you're doing your session and you're talking through the skill, you have a template. The three templates to choose from, they have like one with a background image, one with a front facing image and text around the side. And so it's kind of limiting in what you can actually show the user. Um, and they're not fairly tappable. 
right? So they're restricting like HTML and making it tappable inside of the carts. So you can't really exit the experience and like exit out at Echo Show. It's not really a, meant to be a browser. What do you mean by tappable? Like people can actually touch the screen to they, do events? Right, you, you can touch the screen and slide the screen, but it's very static right now. It's almost just mm. like looking at a picture. So you can put text there and like as you interact with the app, you can change the template dynamically and serve new text and people can scroll up and down. They, they have a back button, they have a forward button. So you can go back and forward. Um, and so you have to actually control and manage those intents for the on-screen forward, back, and, uh, and pause intents. Inside the device Echo Show interface on the cards, so you have to handle those intents. However, it's very limiting on what you can visually show. You only show. get forward, you only get back. If they opened it up to HTML, you could actually add more buttons, play games, like right. select select which video you want to watch, give them like nine options, stuff like that? Yeah, there is a there is an interesting video interface where you can give them vid, a list of video options. Okay. So I, we haven't actually gotten that to work yet, but we've seen it in a couple other apps where you can push a list of possible responses as well, which is kind of interesting. So you can slide to the left and right and then pick the video that you want. So is that one of the things you want to open up to is just programming your own templates? Yeah, I, I get it that you're trying to control the device and you're, you're trying to like not allow for hackers and, and spam in there, but being able to customize the template is going to be able to allow developers like us and, and on Echo Show to make it more important. By having those restrictions, you're limiting the amount of use cases that Echo Show is capable of accomplishing. So if you want to have more use cases, more users, more developers on Echo Show, those templates need to be expanded upon. Agreed. Yeah. Fire TV. So some other things we learned about Fire TV were that it has even different restrictions from Amazon Echo Show. You'd think that Echo Show has a screen, Fire TV has a screen, they'd be similar, right? But no. No, they're not. Um, I think there's no audio allowed on Fire TV, so you can't play like podcasts and music, other audio experiences, even though you've got speakers on that TV. Yeah. You can only play the video skills. So one of the things you have to do when you're programming these skills is actually they return an object that says what kind of device you're playing on. And so if it's a Fire TV, okay, I can only send video content. You asked for a podcast, sorry, no, can't do that. You're playing on an Echo Show, I can send you video. Can you send audio to uh, Echo Show? Yes, you can send audio to Echo Show. Send audio, you're doing a dot or you're just your Alexa, you can't send a video. Right. So there's all these different restrictions across, which honestly, it's, it's kind of annoying for the developers because you have to handle all of them, but also I can imagine it'd be annoying for novices and right. people playing who are like, I just got this to work on my Echo Show, why doesn't it work on my Fire TV? And they're like, it's, it's, it's something wrong with me, but no, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the Amazon device, it's not you. So, so Fire TV is, is awesome. Like I love using the Fire TV to just be able to search by your voice. It's, it's an amazing feeling, it feels like magic. It feels like a, like a, yeah. a magical lamp, it's, it's super cool. But it's limited, right? So it's limited in what you can search, it's limited in what's available, uh, it's limited that it doesn't allow for podcasts. So mm -hmm. what we've done at Alpha Voice is instead of leveraging and missing out on the audio interface for Fire TV, essentially we turn every podcast audio into a dynamic audiogram and then we just serve the audiogram for Fire TV. So if you want your podcast on Fire TV, you should go to Alpha Voice because we'll develop it for you. We'll take all your podcasts, we'll turn it into videos. And so you can choose whether you want cards with more information like show notes or you want the video to display it on Echo Show. So we allow the either or. You can show the description, you can show the show notes, or you can show it as an audiogram with a little wave file and a pretty little picture. And that is how you build on Echo Show. Truth. Truth.